Hey, what's up composers? This is Josh. With all the sales going on for Black Friday for all the sound libraries and virtual instruments, it got me thinking about uh, this program that I use and a lot of other composers use, but um, maybe you're not familiar with it. And I thought this would be helpful for all of you guys who have bought a bunch of sound libraries and are now trying to find a way to uh, organize or implement these libraries. Uh, as you know, some of these libraries are huge. If you're into orchestral stuff, um, these are going to be 50 gigabytes or 100 gigabyte type of uh, uh, storage space and uh, a huge amount of data. Uh, when you load these instruments into your DAW, um, sometimes it can take five minutes or ten minutes to load up in, inside of a session. So actually what a lot of composers do nowadays is uh, they use a program called VNL Ensemble Pro. You may have heard of it. Um, it, it. It is something that is like an industry standard and what it does is it, it's a separate uh, management software system that will have all the VSTs loaded inside of itself and communicate it through your DAW so that your DAW never actually loads a VST instrument ever. It's all inside of this other program so that let's say you have four projects going at the same time and you're using the same exact instruments. You, you can just switch in and out from each session without loading those five, ten minutes of time each uh, that it takes and so it, it, it's uh, it, it really helps with the workflow your creativity process and uh, there's no hang-ups okay I'm gonna show you how it works I will also show you the steps on starting it and uh, how do you how to set it up properly um, very simple process but it, it gets tedious and uh, I think you'll know what I mean after showing you Okay, so to get started, you'll need to load up your DAW. So I already have that ready to go. And then create a new empty session. All right, so um, we're not gonna do anything just yet here, but uh, you will be doing a lot of back and forth for the DAW and the Vienna Ensemble Pro. Next is open up Vienna Ensemble Pro. Um, and uh, this one is actually called server um, the pro server 64 bit that's the one you want to pick uh, there are other ones out there that's why um, it's important to make sure you pick the right one okay we're gonna create a new instance uh, the way I did that again was go here and uh, file add new instance what that will do is uh, it'll open up the shell for each uh, family of instruments you want to organize it in. So this one is called strings. I'm going to change that to a different color. I like orange for strings for some reason. And uh, let's do percussion. So I'll, I'll give you, um, I'll kind of show you the, the way, uh, the simple way first and then a more complicated way when you start routing uh, audio outputs. So the first, the simple way for, let's say, uh, a single instance would be loading up your favorite instrument. So I'll do a play and load up some uh, violin patches. So here we go. Let's just do a sustain patch. All right, so I have one of those. Let's go and do some short patches so we'll do maybe a staccato patch patch all right you see how long that takes to load but you'll only need to do it one time as opposed to doing that every single time in each session you uh, open up so that's the short patch let's do a spiccato patch and then maybe a pizzicato patch all right, so I got one, two, three, four, all routed to MIDI channels, one, two, three, four. Next step is go over here to this side. I'll zoom in just a little more, uh, more for you. And you can see that there are two channels. Um, on, and the number on the first one is telling you which MIDI port you're in. That is uh, by default the first one, and the second one is the MIDI channels. MIDI channels is actually um, interesting because if you don't do all, then 
you're only stuck with MIDI channel one, which is um, I'm not sure why there e there's even options for that. So if you just do all, it'll open up all 16 channels for you to communicate through. So make sure you do that. Okay, uh, let's see. Some other things you can do is rename this. Um, we'll call it violin one. All right. Okay, so next is go back to your DAW. We're going to open up an instance of Vion Ensemble Pro. So you'll see there's, I don't know, eight or nine different uh, plugin options for Vion Ensemble. This is where I got confused and I wanted to show you this so that you don't make the same mistake I did and waste valuable hours uh, getting loaded. So make sure you do the Vion Ensemble Pro with the three ticks after it. And that's the one you want to pick, uh, choose if you're um, loading all of this all inside one PC. If you are networking, it might be different, uh, I'm not sure, but I, it, it could be the same too. So now that when you open it up, you have the strings and you have the percussion that I've uh, created already. So uh, if I want to route the, the violin patches, I want to choose that first instance, connect it. All right, so that's communicating now with each other. Um, there's two other options that are important to address. So the, the first one is the buffers. Um, this will times everything by two. So if your ASIO latency samples um, are 1,000, it'll go to 2,000. So you can see here on the very bottom, it says 2,048 uh, samples. And then over here, you have an option to couple or decouple. If you couple, there's advantages that I won't really get into just because of the, the complexity of things. But I actually choose decouple on all of mine because uh, when you save your instruments, it, it won't save all the changes you've made to each instrument um, through Vion Ensemble Pro, if that makes sense. So it, uh, when you press save, it only take you 10 seconds as opposed to sometimes it could take five minutes if you were to uh, have it coupled all right now let's test it out let's cross our fingers make sure this works okay that's your that's your sustain okay staccato a little bit short spiccato sound and the last one being the your uh, pizzicato okay Great, so um, then what you could do here is you can quickly change the color corresponding to the instruments. Um, this is the VST output, uh, physical output that is linked with it. So I will also call it violin, I'll just call it violin one for everything housed in there. So that's your first step uh, just for a simple uh, audio outputting. Now to make it a little bit more complicated but uh, this is where the fun happens um, oh actually I, I picked the wrong one let me start over let's do the same thing Vienna Ensemble Pro okay this is where the fun happens is uh, the audio routing madness that can happen here so I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a quick way uh, demonstration and um, try to make sense of it all here. So there's strings. I'm also going to uh, edit this real quick. Percussion. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm connected now with my percussion. Next is, uh, let's go ahead and, and select our percussion instruments. All right. So let's do one instance here of contact. Um, let's do action strikes. Okay, so there's one instrument. Let's do another one from damage. Let 
we'll do snares for this one. All right. Let's also do one for uh, rising hits is a good one. We'll do uh, basic sub. Okay, great. So now that we have three different instruments, uh, percussion, you can go crazy and th there may be as many as 50 different uh, instruments that you'll have easy when you uh, build your template. But I will just show you three for now. So action strikes um, is what I'll call it. And the reason why I'm, I'm calling action strikes, even though there's other, other instruments involved, is because this is the first one and I have my audio output routed to uh, one and two. Make sure you change it to all as well. Let me also zoom in so you can see that better. All right, so I have that set up to go. Now the next step is make sure that your MIDI channels and auto, also the audio output channels are, are routed correctly. So I'm gonna now uh, change the audio output to stereo two, which is um, outputs three and four. And then on the next one down, we'll do stereo three, which is outputs uh, five and six. All right. And what I need to do now is create um, uh, input corresponding to that out here on the side. So we'll do um, channel. Make sure you do channel, not input, and do action strikes two. And do it one more time. Go here, action strikes three. Okay. Now we're going to rename these corresponding to the uh, instruments. So the first one was action strikes. Second one, I'm going to do um, studio snares. And the third instrument was called basic sub from the Ryzen hit. So you can also maybe do that to remember what um, uh, brand you're using. Okay, so I have those three. That corresponds to that. The last thing is just make sure the routing is, is correct. So over here is the uh, routing for the outputs. So th output three and four corresponding to stereo two, and then five and six for the third one, this uh, uh, corresponds to the stereo three in contact. All right. Now we go back inside of our DAW and do the same thing. So uh, let's add the corresponding MIDI channels first one was uh, called action strikes the uh, second one was called um, I'm drawing a blank here studio snares and the third one is basic subs change that to purple too real quick All right, so uh, MIDI channel one, MIDI channel two for the next one, and MIDI channel three. That looks good. Uh, the last thing you need to do is make sure your port is selected to the right one. So I have two ports, the strings and then the percussion. So I'm per MIDI port one. Great. Next, I will go ahead and activate the output. So you'll, you have to do that as well inside your DAW. When you activate your output, then you have um, the same thing. So you can just copy and paste this. Action strikes. All right. And you have to do this because um, when you have more control of your mixing when you, once you do this. All right, let's zoom out here. I am going to do the same color corresponding. So that should be it. So I have my um, audio outputs uh, routed differently. Okay, uh, studio uh, action strikes. Next one is studio snares. And the last one is a basic sub. Okay, you'll notice that uh, the sounds coming out from each one, and I noticed that basic subs is wrong. See, uh, see how it's coming out, studio snare. So I somehow routed that weird. So let's go back to that, and let's see what I did wrong. 
studio. Everything looks good. Let's see. Oh, I see. Th this actually was switched. So what we need to do is do that. I somehow mix those two together. So see how that lights up for, for that one. Um, studio there comes out for there. There you go. All right, and that'll correspond in your mixer as well. So you have more control of um, all of your sounds um, individually routed. So that's pretty much it. So to give you an idea, I want to show you my template that I use from day-to-day uh, -day purposes. This is uh, organized in score order. So I have woodwinds, brass, uh, percussion, and then strings. And if you see, I have... Um, it starts from the very top, piccolo, down to flute, oboe, and whatnot. Um, I'm going to use my little arrow so you can kind of see that in real time. Uh, here's a, a piano patch. Okay. Moving on, I have timpani. Then I have uh, more percussion stuff, some crash cymbals, um, suspended cymbals. Moving on. Uh, a lot of loops and uh, ethnic drums down here. Okay, then I have my string patch. Uh, strings I use is um, mainly from uh, the Hollywood Orchestra from East West. I have a cool. Uh, string patch that I just got for this um, upcoming sale and that was uh, Joshua Bell solo violin great and then we have lots of different um, string patches you know and that's with all the articulations that are pretty common I have some uh, effects stuff from the old East West Symphonic Orchestra uh, let's see here's here's a cool one and that's great for horror stuff I have a harp patch uh, gliss which is re really useful not sure why that's not working but uh, it does work um, here's a <laughs> all right so you got some um, bass guitar patches and then I have a solo Nothing too fancy, um, but all of this is important because uh, when you're composing on the fly and you have a lot of ideas in your head, it's important to be able to um, channel all of that through something like this where uh, nothing is holding you back from loading instruments. The way I see it, the analogy is um, you're using a car as opposed to a bicycle to get yourself uh, from one place to another. So when you're um, loading up a lot of instruments inside the actual Cubase session or Pro Tools session or wh whichever DAW you use, and, um, and you do that for each one individually, it can get really tedious because of the loading time. And it, let's say your computer crashes um, which it will inevitably do some from time to time. Then you have to get out and, and then go back in the program, reload everything up. Where uh, opposed to having the sounds loaded up separately in a different management system, and uh, if your computer crashes or, or the uh, DAW crashes, then you can just get out of that, reload the session without the uh, time factor of loading up all the instruments again. Okay, so that's it. I hope that helps, and um, I hope you enjoyed my video.
today I'm gonna make more tutorials and lessons so please subscribe to my channel Sewn Compositions and I will see you later